And, you know, over the years, most researchers purchase the best equipment that they can afford, you know, to enhance their, their chances of uh, seeing one of these creatures. And uh, so I went through that whole gamut of spending all kinds of money on game cams, the night vision, and all those type of things. But finally, I got to the point where, you know, I, I got a thermal. Now there's different types of thermals you can get. Most of them are handheld units that have the monitor built in. I don't recommend those, and even though I've never had one, I have seen people use them. And the reason is, anybody who's done any kind of research knows that there's certain things that is a dead stop for a Bigfoot uh, encounter. And that is, if you look at them, if you shine a light at them, all of these things make them feel threatened and, and they, a lot of times they will vacate the area. This thermal allows me to separate the monitor from the camera with a 20-foot tether. So I can mount these cameras up in a tree and let it run all night long. I can, and they don't give off any light. Right now I've got it on top of a 12-foot pole that I can spin around within my tent. And as you can see the monitor here as there's the woods outside. And I'm, I can see 360 degrees around my camera and watch the woods. And you can see well into the woods. I mean, you could probably see 100 yards into the woods. So it gives you an incredible advantage that these creatures don't know that we have. You know, technology is certainly catching up to, to them. Uh, and so that's what I like about this thermal. The camera separates from the monitor. And I've also put this together as a mobile unit. I can hook it on my belt. It runs off a small ATV battery and it's all one unit with a DVR and a, and a flash card. And I use the camera on top of a walking stick, about six foot, seven foot tall walking stick. And that allows me to hike and to walk in areas with this technology. And the benefit to this is a lot of times everyone who does research knows how sneaky these creatures are and and because of their stealth they like to come in behind you you know they like to keep themselves you know at an advantage and in order for you to view them at what they're doing this camera allows you to see behind you without turning your body around to end the encounter you you, you can pretend like you don't see them and you can just let the camera do the work and that is why I love this camera and he's got clothes on so you can kind of see the separation of heat from his head to where his upper body is covered with a coat. If he was n a naked animal with only hair, his, his whole body would be white. Hey Randy, when, when, was, when was the first, uh, the, f the first uh, really good sitting cheek signature you ever got when you got the flare? Like what was the... You know, like, what was I like, well, like, wow, this really paid off, you know, for the first time, you know? I was at, well, the best one for me that really just made me think, wow, this is a really valuable piece of equipment, was when uh, it was four years to the day that I was back at the Chickasaw Park, and I had four or five other people with me, and I was actually in the same campsite, you know, and that's where I stay almost every time, the same campsite that I've had my encounter, you know, I don't know, I, I, if it's just luck or if it's just superstition but I try to you know spend time in the exact same campsite well, anyways this was my first time with my thermal camera there and I don't know how long I'd had the thermal at that time but I told the fellas I said what I'm going to do there was only one other campsite that was occupied that night it was February I don't know February 2nd February 3rd whatever day of my encounter was it was a cold month and when we got there there was only one other campsite being taken and there was no camp host you know in February uh, and they were on the creek, but further up, about four or five campsites up on on the creek, Rock Creek right there. And so from campsite 30, you actually have to walk across a small road and then another campsite to get to the creek, which is Rock Creek. And that's the creek that I heard the big one cross the night of my encounter. Well, anyway, so I have this thermal now, and I'm really excited about it. And, and of course, we're, we were playing with it all afternoon and into the evening. But my plan was to, about every 15 minutes leave campsite and walk over to the creek and just pan up and down the creek that's all i was doing was just looking up and down the creek and then going back to the campsite about every 15 20 minutes 
and it was around midnight and I told the guys I was walking back over to the creek again to check things out and when I got down to the creek and I panned up and down the creek I saw a heat signature of something standing in the water on the other side of a brush a brushy area that all I could see was the head and shoulders but you could clearly see that he was in the center of this creek the creek is really wide it's probably 30 feet wide and about a foot average about a foot to two to three foot deep in just different areas so whatever this was was standing just in the middle of the creek and he was staring into the other occupied camp the only other camp that was occupied that night was, was a man and a woman and they were already asleep it was staring into their campsite while standing in the middle of the creek so, so you got to observe him he didn't even know you're there no he didn't he he what his, his attention was at the women the woman and man's tent that's crazy and that's uh, crazy. and i told the guys i said i said come here come here i said come here i said i think we got something and they they came over and we looked at it and they're like yeah 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 and i was like you know and it, when something like this happens you know you've been waiting for this for so long and then all of a sudden you you've got some decisions to make i I wanted to get a better picture of it, but I couldn't because he was behind some brush and, and scrub. And I, I just, all I could see was his round head above this scrub standing in the creek. And I I wanted him to, to move so I could get a better, I, I wanted a full body shot. So not really ever experimenting with the thermal, I, I tried to move to another campsite. A campsite closer, which would allow me to get down into the creek to film him. And like a fool, I tried to use the monitor oh. for me to walk through the darkness, and and I, you can't do that. I mean, you know, I was tripping and tripping and stumbling, and and as soon as I got around through some boulders and around a tree, I saw the heat signature of the other campsite's campfire. But I was already discombobulated with my view, and when I saw that heat signature from their their dead campfire, I stopped, and I'm like. Could that be what I saw? Is that what I and it took for a few minutes I'm looking at their campfire thinking, no way, is that what I was looking at when I was looking over there? And I saw this little raccoon or something running by their campfire and I was like, no way could that be what I saw. And then I realized how far that view was away from the creek and and, and then I continued on and found my way to a, a trail that took me down to the creek. By that point, when I got down to the creek, it was completely gone. I'd made too much noise. I'd you know, lollygagged at, the, at, at my view of that campsite and couldn't quite figure out get myself squared away with what I was looking at. So that was kind of a, a bad deal on how that panned out. But if I could have got down into the creek immediately, I think I would have caught it, you know, trying to get away or at least full-bodied. Yeah. But that was my first really that made me see the value of, of FLIR because you, it just pierces the darkness and these things don't know you're looking at them.